Hey boys and girls, hi, welcome back to Monroe uh, Live, and I'm here with Corey and Mike, and we're going to recap our adventures um, in Sweden and uh, Norway. So uh, Corey remembers all the dates, he's going to give us a little lowdown on where we were and what time, and then we'll start going into the um, anecdotes. So yeah. Corey? Yeah, so we spent <coughs> about a week there, we left on June 7th, and I think we returned on June 14th. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And the first place we went was Norway. Exactly. Sweden. 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 I, blew I it. can't believe it. <laughs> He's the guy that remembers everything. Sweden. No. Sweden. We went to Sweden. Yeah. yeah. It was Gothenburg, Gothenburg, although it's spelled differently. G O T E, you know, Gothenburg. Gothenburg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's nice enough we had a nice little tour guide and, and guy who coordinated that for us. His name was Mika. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll throw up some pictures of Mika, or if you see another person with us in the B-roll, that was Mika. <coughs> so thanks to Mika for helping coordinate a lot of our trips to the places we visited. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about flying there. So this is our first time flying to Europe in a long time. <coughs> mm. And uh, Sandy, what do you think of our plane ride out and the food? Okay, so um, <coughs> Delta is was one of my favorite airlines in the world. Uh, it's not Singapore Airlines but or, or uh, uh, Emirates, but you know what? I always uh, got the feeling that they, they cared about me. Um, I have about almost three million miles with those guys. And, uh, but, <clears throat> uh, but the big problem for me was the uh, <clears throat> dinner, I guess is what they was wanted it, to call was it. A it was like a chicken patty, chicken meatloaf. Chicken meatloaf Brown would be, chicken. yeah, and then deep fried until there was nothing did, left in it. Did either of you take a photo of it? I do have a photo. Oh, yeah. did you? And so we couldn't identify the orange. I didn't need it was because it sweet potatoes or I don't know what it was. I, I take it, I took it a little taste and uh, I got a, a lump of something that mm, I didn't care much yeah. for, no. so I passed. The flight back, um, uh, we were told initially that we we're going to be flying on KLM. KLM does have usually really uh, good dinners. Um, uh, but um, uh, we were mistaken, and this time we got a uh, a kind of uh, chicken with um, curry sauce on it. It was better. It was much better. better. I would say it was edible for sure, and the rice was good. Well, not good, but it <coughs> but it was way better than whatever the orange stuff was. So I wasn't really um, happy. At least we took off on time. Delta was pretty good. We landed in Amsterdam, went through immigration, flew on KLM, landed in Sweden. Yeah. Um, get out. We get an Uber. <coughs> the Uber was there right away. We get to the hotel. We'll talk about the hotel. So now we're at the hotel. Ah, hotel was brilliant. The Blue Radisson. Yep. I'm telling you what. Um, I have never. Um, I've never experienced a Radisson like that place. Um, I can't say enough good about it. The uh, breakfast was absolutely to die for. I mean, they had a. They had a, a cafeteria hall that was uh, big, not as big as the second one, but big. The, uh, the, uh, the breakfast, which was included, <clears throat> was absolutely phenomenal. And the dinner, I mean, <laughs> this may sound strange. It, I never do this in the States, but we ate every, we ate every <laughs> meal at the hotel right. because it was so damn good. I mean, that we, food was to die for. We eventually had almost everything <clears throat> off the menu. Yeah. yeah, we did. They they had oysters. They had ceviche. 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 ceviche yeah. Yeah. Um, what else did we get? They had a, a they had a, a beef man, a beef item yeah. that you got. Yeah. I got a bunch of fish options. Yeah, right. the fish was really yeah, well. We, you're you're yeah, sitting yeah. in so in wh Sweden. When I got back, <coughs> I sat down with the Monroe Live team and I went through all the photos. I think twenty percent of my photos are pictures of the food yeah. there and at yeah. the country club. Yeah. So, anyways, let's stay. Uh, on task here. So traveling there was pretty easy. The hotel was nice. Our first day was an acclimation day. Mike and I went for a run. It was cold and rainy. On the boardwalk. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Mike, what did you think of the town? Impressively uh, new looking. And that we had heard this is a shipbuilding town. It from used to the, be. Yeah. From the 50s, 60s, maybe even the 70s. And that since then, a lot of new buildings, both um, um, commercial and residential. <coughs> so I was really impressed with how much was new. And they've, they've got plans. I mean, they have a big, giant uh, 3D model, like uh, 
oh, yeah. uh, uh, stereolithography model of how the, the town's going to look, and they've got it from old to it isn't quite done yet, yeah. and amazing. In fact, we were watching one of the buildings going up from our hotel rooms, yeah. and... Uh, it, it'll be the tallest building <coughs> in the Nordic states, or the... Yeah, yeah. The Scandinavian. Scandinavian, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was very impressed. I I liked uh, I liked everything about the uh, hotel. My bed was comfortable. I I wasn't uh, staring at a yeah. brick wall like it. Uh, yeah. You know, I thought it was impressive is people coming from outside the hotel yeah. to have dinner there. We had so to not <coughs> we had to make we had to yeah. make reservations yeah. for not uh, just for, the for residents, yeah. but people coming in. That just doesn't happen here. No, no. But I can see why. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was really really quite good. So the first two days we're flying, getting acclimated. We're at the hotel. Um, the ninth, I believe that was Friday. Uh, the mm. ninth, we had a packed day. Mm. I think we had three different places to go. We went to Uni Three, um, which was a Geely building. We went to the new uh, design center for Lincoln Co. and Seeker. Then yep. we went to a company called Auto Bay. So start with the first one, Sandy. We went to Uni 3, and you had an interview with a guy named D Didier. Yeah, I don't know his Didier. last name. We'll put it up, but Didier. Yeah. And he works for um, uh, the Chinese European EV Association, so they so, call it Sievert. Yeah, yeah. C-E-V-T. Yeah. Sievert, yeah. So they, um, uh, they were very informative. Uh, no editing, no nothing. They asked us to stay away from asking certain questions that uh, we still won't answer uh, about uh, production volumes and things like that because they want to keep it quiet, and I have no problem with that. I thought the uh, the interview went well. I was very impressed with the, um, like I say, it's Chinese European. Uh, it's basically Geely, but it's Chinese European that uh, that they want to try and get across. The po their point is that. <clears throat> they don't want this to be like just a Chinese company. They want they want the image of the company to be uh, something more European, something that uh, that is going to appeal to everyone. I think yeah. the full interview will end up uh, on Patreon. So if you want to sign up for Patreon, you can see the full interview. It doesn't necessarily fit the theme of what we normally put on the channel, but if people want to want to watch that. That full interview with yeah. him, they'll be able to see yeah. that. Well, I think this strategy. If you're if you're into strategy, if you're into what what are they going to do in in China or sorry in uh, Scandinavia, what the Chinese are going to do and how they're going to do it and who's going to be in charge, then that 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 uh, that uh, that interview is quite good. Yeah. And then while we were doing that interview, um, Mike, you were with Gang Wei. Yep. Um, yeah. Another person. Do you want to describe what what he showed you? Yeah, he's the CEO of that complex there, of what Geely's complex is, the Uni 3 complex. Uh, five buildings, four are in place for the buildings. Um, we'll talk about the design building in a few minutes, but in the hotel, they're making a hotel on the waterfront there, all part of the same complex. The hotel ought to be done by the end of the year, <coughs> yeah, I think that's what they said. Say, yeah. uh, we can't wait to go back and stay in that hotel. But it, I was impressed by the, uh, they've been building on site for 10 years and just the name of the company, they didn't put Geely up there, they didn't put Volvo, which it's a Volvo town <coughs> in Gothenburg. Yeah. They put it Uni 3 and mm -hmm. uni, uh, Unified and like University and there's a couple of other words that he mentioned that like they want this to be the campus for the future development of their uh, vehicles. Right, yeah. all the different makes of the the vehicle under the Geely umbrella. So, mm. um, I was impressed by that because, frankly, most companies that we bump into, they want their name on the building. Yeah, right. Well, the, the, that's the I parent think, company yeah. name. I think that's part of the um, one of the things that uh, we found out. I found out about when I was going to China quite a bit was the um, uh, China 2025, which was a 10-year plan to basically put China in the lead as far as um, as far as electric vehicles and whatnot was concerned. And then the other thing was uh, Belt and Road, which uh, is in essence um, a way of uh, a way of not subjugating, but but anyways, getting everybody friendly with you um, so that um, you become, in this case, China, China becomes the uh, 
you know, the big brother that's really helping out, not looking over your shoulder. The, uh, the investor who's uh, uh, not as concerned about whether or not uh, you're making a whole bunch of money, they're, they're interested in making sure that the social uh, aspects are taken care of, the finances are taken care of, the, uh, the launching and whatnot, everything, everything to make sure that whomever it is that they're, uh, uh, they're trying to talk to and whatnot becomes mm -hmm. um, hugely successful. Mm -hmm. So I, <clears throat> it's a different route, um, you know, you just don't go in and um, conquer, you know, I say, uh, I saw I came and I, or sorry, I came, I saw I conquered yeah. kind of a thing. It's kind of like, hey, let's be buddies and uh, I got lots of money and you got good ideas, let's make it happen. And let's build off of your legacy, right? Exactly. That whole, yeah. whole legacy. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. And Sandy, so while Mike was doing that, you finished your interview, then you drove <coughs> their simulator. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it was the the Nerber ring. Yeah. And yeah. you got in that. I just reviewed the footage uh, that was taken. I was not flexible enough to climb over the center, so that woman uh, she climbed in yeah. there and filmed for us. But yeah. what do you think of the simulator? The simulator actually made me ill. <coughs> it and which is good. I've never been on the Nuremberg ring, but uh, but I'm I'm certain that uh, I don't want to go now. <coughs> um, yeah, it was uh, it was very dramatic. Um, uh, I've been in sim simulators in the past, mostly for aircraft, larger aircraft like the C-17, and that's my only experience. I've never been in a simulator for a race car, and uh, believe me, <coughs> um, you felt the effects. Um, the reason that the lady sitting next to me that was taking the movies, she didn't see the screen, so she felt the seats move and the you know, a little bit of the gyration in one eye, but it really wasn't anything. Your eyes are basically picking up everything that's going on. And when I went on the high side to get around a corner and found out this isn't really a corner, this is more like um, um, a hairpin turn, <clears throat> it, I mean, it's just a movie, but you know what? I, uh, I couldn't believe it. I was pulling on that wheel as hard as I could. I was afraid of losing control. I mean, it was, yeah. it was for real, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we spent a little time at, at the Uni 3 building where that, that simulator was. Then we headed over to the brand new uh, design center for two car companies. They're sub brands of Geely yeah. Link and Co. and Seeker. Yeah. So we did tour a couple other buildings which we didn't film, so that won't be, be on there. <clears throat> but talk about the building that, that we saw. Hmm. Okay, so um, Stefan, the guy that uh, gave us the tour, uh, Stefan and I have known each other for quite a while. He used to work at, uh, at VW, um, and I knew him from uh, Bentley. So uh, uh, first off, <coughs> Stefan looks younger. I mean, I don't know how. I, I look in the mirror, and I can't hardly really believe the face I'm looking at, but Stefan <laughs> must be that German stuff. I don't know. I, I got part of that, 50% German, but I can't, uh, I can't believe how, how good he looked. And he was about as excited as I've ever seen him. So I went, we went through this building and it's absolutely spectacular. I've never seen anywhere. Um, uh, yeah. a, it was more like a cathedral. Yeah, you, than a you walk in the main <clears throat> door. So from the outside, it's, it's, it's all black with metal slats and the lower levels kind of are tilted in and the outer levels go out to a rectangle and the slats get thinner and thinner and he said the reasoning yeah. behind that was it gets more secure as you go up so they right. want less less visibility in. Yeah. Then you walk in there's a huge like auditorium with these with st stair steps on either side a pass through and then these ledges and I've seen Heating. this yeah. I've seen this at different campuses so the the school that I went to Kettering is building a new like 100 million dollar building and you walk in and they have these spots where you can go sit and uh, study or yeah. socialize or whatever. And it's this new concept. So I see that in Europe. I've seen that in some university buildings. Uh, and then they walked us through some of the other areas. and Yeah, for the machining of the clays and, the, yeah. and whatnot. Oh, I yeah. was really impressed. Now, Mike, have you been in a uh, product design office at any other OEMs? It, it doesn't look anything like that. Oh, definitely not. I've, I've been in uh, General Motors. Uh, product design offices, and I've been in a dome at FCA. Yeah. Um, what they, they, they're going to have is they have a natural light, remember that? Yeah. A yeah. natural yeah. light uh, uh, 
area at the top of the building right. where they can roll out the, the models and get a look at them, uh, the vehicles, full-size vehicles, roll them out, get a look at them in natural light. That's yeah. going to be, that's yeah. a nice benefit. Yeah. So I've been pretty much in, in almost all of the major uh, design uh, studios. And um, so Ford, GM, Chrysler, um, BMW, uh, Bentley, Rolls-Royce, on, on and on and on. But <clears throat> nothing the size of that. Yeah. I mean, what did he say it was? 250,000 square feet? It was huge. It was gigantic. He said in square meters, 30,000 square meters? 30,000 square meters, yeah. which would be even was bigger. Like four stories <coughs> tall. Yeah, it was really spectacular. I, I've never seen anything like it. And having the ability to do the machining uh, for either, uh, you know, design, uh, design foam or what have you, right there. And, and how many different studios did we see like that? I mean, they got it like separated four. into two yeah. major yeah. areas. You, see, you can see they're running in the, um, the CMM machines and, the, uh, and, and basically the machining uh, uh, stations. And running them in, they're, they're checking to make sure that they get down to 0 0.01 of a millimeter. That's kind of the accuracy that they're going to need to machine the clays or machine the structural foam or whatever they're going to be manufacturing in there. And then, on top of that, it has to be even more accurate when you do the C coordinate measuring machines, CMMs. They are, uh, without, a, without a doubt, uh, a mile ahead of everybody else. Yeah, I've never seen anything And keep like in that. mind, these are for two brands that <coughs> most people have never heard of. Link, yeah. Link & Co, spelled L-Y-N-K ampersand C-O, yeah. and Seeker, which I think they're two newer yeah, newer brands. Well, I never brand. heard of either one. Yeah, we had one of them. One. The uh, uh, is it the Lincoln Co. That one's going to be a fully autonomous vehicle for taxis yeah. and things like that. <clears throat> so um, we looked at the styling. Um, looks pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely European, but it has an extra flair to it. <clears throat> yeah. Something that I, I think came from the Chinese. Chinese have a lot of extremely nice uh, styles and designs. Anybody that's been to China and seen their buildings and whatnot knows that they really have a, yeah. have a flair for that sort of stuff. So we wrapped <coughs> up our tour of that design center, very cool. Uh, Mika was kind enough to drive us to our next stop, which was at a company called Oro Bay, A-U-R-O-B-A-Y. Yeah. Oro Bay is a new division of Volvo, Volvo. Yeah. Um, solving uh, a problem that will still exist for the next, I'd say, several decades. So their, their goal is to try and reduce uh, the emissions to zero of internal combustion engines that will still be in use while the transition to electric vehicles will happen. So although we are an EV-centered uh, EV company right now, we're yeah. really focusing on electrification there still is a need for this. So they walked us through their their technology. And Sandy, what did you think? So first of all, the, the people there, we had, um, I think his name was Daniel. Yeah. Uh, Daniel was the CEO. Was it Daniel? Yeah. Carolyn oh, yeah. was a director. Yeah. We had Josh, who was a technical guy, and Matt's. I think it was Michael. Is it Michael? Was the director. I remember. Yeah, right? there was yeah a, he was the director. Sorry, not yeah. We were synced. <coughs> so Michael, Carolyn. Uh, Mats and Josh. They're trying to figure out how to take the existing um, ICE products that people are going to get stuck with. How do you take and convert them uh, to something that would be more um, energy and, um, and ecology efficient? And so what they've done is they've developed a, a couple of different things, a couple of different engines. And what they're trying to do is reverse the, the trend for um, the uh, pollution uh, that's associated with actually building the parts. So they're using a tremendous amount of recycled aluminum, uh, recycled plastics, and they were showing us, I think we're going to show some of this stuff, but they're showing us all kinds of different techniques, technologies, and, um, and formulas. And, and a big thing was heating up <coughs> the catalytic converter before yeah, a cold start. Right. Double. So yeah. they had a heating element that got up to 900 degrees. Yep. And if you can heat up the cat before you start up, essentially you can reduce your startup significantly. emission significantly. Yeah, and um, everybody's known that for a long time, 
but it does co it costs extra money. So it's a, it's called a pup converter, and um, and by putting it in there, yes, they heated it up. And by the way, they're heating it electrically. Mm -hmm. It's not being heated by the engine. They're heating it up so that when uh, the gases start up out of the engine, the converter is already the catalytic converter is already hot. So the cat basically knocks out the water, gets rid of, uh, it turns into vapor basically, actually most of it turns into um, uh, just basically oxygen that's gonna come out the end of the tailpipe. But this, uh, I mean, we've known about it, but nobody's ever really done anything with it. So I'm very happy to see that because quite frankly, and they made it so that it'll fit, um, fit into a normal engine compartment. And I, I like that idea. Um, I know no, not everybody's going to go run right out and buy a new $50,000, $40,000 car. It isn't going to happen. So what do you do for the guys that are, you know, can't afford it? Well, now I can take maybe a $2,000 add-on, chop, <clears throat> chop the end of the, uh, uh, the, the beginning, if you like, of the uh, exhaust pipe, plunk in something, bolt it up, and away you go. And now... Okay, you're still driving uh, uh, a gas vehicle, but it's um, it's it's not spewing out the kind of toxins that, to, yeah. that could get in the way. And then we moved on to the next day. Uh, the next day, we go to the Volvo Museum, and there is a. <coughs> I have a plethora of footage, so just to put this in perspective. I was transferring the footage to the team here. I took 259 videos, and Mike took probably. 40, yeah. and I took 10 with your camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was wore out. So there's a lot to sift through. Um, we walked through this museum. They started back at the genesis of the Volvo car yeah. company yeah. And back in was the, the 30s or Three 40s. Two guys got yeah. together and yeah. over lunch. Yeah. And they got yeah. a display. And it, it's a, a yeah. small scale, like yeah. uh, Henry Ford Museum. Yeah. But they had quite a number of uh, vehicles in there that I have never seen before, yeah. never even heard of before. So it was uh, it was quite a good experience for me. But the best one was when they let us outside and we could drive some of their cars. Yeah, before we get to outside, you saw a lot in the building. I did. So we saw the old cars. We saw the cars in the in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Then we saw that car from I think the 80s. It was the safety car with the yeah. five mile an hour bumpers and right. How, oh, yeah. how, what did that camera look like on the back of it? <laughs> that was really impressive. I think it was about, I don't know, about nine inches square. And, uh, and then it had a lens inside of it. And it was very rem that lens was very reminiscent to the very first um, video camera I bought. So yeah. We all knew Volvo was a, yeah. a leader in applying safety, but it was, they had it all in that one vehicle yeah. showing yeah. The, some of the innovations they came up with. I thought it was kind of interesting, too, when you looked at that vehicle, the bumper stuck out so far you could use it as a park bench. It, I remember that as yeah. well. I remember the Volvos coming out and everybody trying to get to the five mile an hour uh, bump so they didn't destroy your car. So they put, they put great big long shock absorbers in it. <clears throat> and then they were, they were shooting for a, a 25 mile an hour crash. Now we have obviously something entirely different and it's, it's absolutely brilliant the way things have gone from there. But Volvo was the first one to have that uh, actually yeah. on a vehicle on a vehicle and, and working yeah yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah um, so we worked our way through the museum um, saw all sorts of cars they also make trucks heavy yeah. duty trucks yeah. off-road things tractors won't, won't yeah. spend too much time on that boat engines yeah um, and then we make our our way through the shop now we had a nice tour guide so our tour guide oh, yeah. uh, what was it Hans Hans yes Hans, Hans was amazing. He yeah. so we essentially got a tour by the like the curator, the manager yeah. of the whole thing. So yeah. Sandy got to step over ropes and sit in cars that were roped yeah. off. Yeah. You were touching stuff that said "Don't touch." Yeah, you just he were said king it was of the okay. castle. Yeah. yeah, and and we really got treated like royalty. Then the the culmination of our trip to the Volvo Museum was <clears throat> they have a whole garage, a fleet of it had to have been fifty. Yeah, 80 vehicles at least all drivable yeah in 
I wouldn't say pristine, very, very good condition. Very, yeah. very, very good condition. And some being restored. Yeah, things all the way from <laughs> by, the, by old guys the that, 50s, yeah. the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Yeah. They even had like a, 20, a 2005 V8 XC90. Yeah. So we started off, you drove a police car. You drove yes. that red car. You drove yeah. the white car. I don't yeah. even know what they're called. But then they pulled what out the that? rally car yeah. from, from like the 60s. 60, yeah. Like 65 or something. And it was wow. a hopped up, high revving, inline four, and the thing must have weighed 1,800 pounds. And it yeah. went like a scalded cat. Oh, it was and so fast. I can't yeah. believe. I would never I, guess. That's what I was kind of hoping I was going to get out of the, uh, the Volvo Sport. But that thing went, I, I mean, it had, I could not believe it. it and had, I didn't have any problems with the gearbox then. That was for no sure. No reverse. <laughs> no reverse. I didn't need reverse. It, I just want to get first gear. It had to have <clears> had naturally aspirated, I'm guessing it was tuned to like 200 horsepower. At least. 180, At least. 200. For how light well, it was. It's hard to say, too, because the car is so damn light. Yeah. I mean, when I did the spin around uh, to, to come back in, um, when, I, when I spun that car around, I, I couldn't believe... I couldn't believe how quickly I could, you know, um, make the car hop uh, to give you uh, to give you that uh, that turn. But you know what I forgot to do? This is an old-fashioned car, and the brake was right there. The emergency. I I did not do a brake turn. That's what I really wanted to do, <laughs> and I forgot about it because I was having so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we spent about <clears throat> an hour, maybe an hour, hour and twenty minutes yeah. driving cars. Until yeah. the office yeah. guy yeah. came out and told us, we got us yelled like, at. He, he yelled I, at I was driving and I got yelled at. Making too much noise. And then yeah, that was it. They had enough. Yeah, we they and wanted the, to arrest. The him. guy that was riding with us, Hans, was egging you on. He's yeah. like, yeah. get it up to six thousand oh, RPM. You know what Hans harder, did? Harder, harder. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Brah, brah, brah. Yeah. And I'm not sure. But I I was trying to watch the tack every once in a while, but that thing would fly over when uh, yeah. when uh, when you yeah. punched it. It was amazing. Yeah. That that quick and think of it, it's like car and they had uh, what do you call it uh, Weber's on there. So that's the kind of uh, carburetors I had on my uh, yeah. my Morgan. So that was great. Thank you, Hans. Yeah, um, absolutely. That was wonderful. Yeah. So we go back. We have dinner. Go to bed. Whatever. Nothing. So the next day we check out of the hotel and we go to the Saab 75th annu anniversary hair festival. Yeah. Right. And what's it? Trothhatten? Yeah. Is that troll -hatten. Troll -hatten. Troll -hatten. Troll -hatten. Troll -hatten. It's the yes. word troll and yeah, exactly. hatten. Troll -hatten. With the, with the yeah, exactly. It's said it, because I saw that thing and it said uh, uh, made in troll hotten by trolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought there was kind of a cool yeah. ad that they had. So it's a smaller <coughs> town. It was probably 20 minutes from Gothenburg. Yeah. We get there and it is the most sobs I've ever seen in one location, because I don't see that many anyways. Well, it's because everybody drove there. They had, they had a reunion that uh, People from all over Europe drove there, yeah, the yeah, Netherlands, choked Germany. Up a bunch of cars I've never seen before. Yeah. A lot of cars. Some that were modified, some that were yeah. original, some that were kind of resto mods. Um, so we have a ton of B-roll. We talked to lots of owners that they talked about all the improvements that they made, particularly to the older ones. So there yeah. were some older sobs. Uh, the the 96 model it was called the 96, but it was built in the 50s or six, 60s. It was the 60s. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was the first one was built in the in the 50s or 40s. Uh, but it had a little three cylinder two stroke. So yeah. Sa mm -hmm. Sandy, what do you think about all the two strokes you saw? Well, I, I was first off amazed at how many two strokes they they did have. Um, those are, <clears throat> I mean, we worry about gas guzzlers. A two stroke uh, that like what they had. When one of those things went by, you were coughing. It, um, yeah. it, uh, it was, but, but I mean, it was quick. It was incredibly efficient. The, the thing that really shocked the daylights out of me was the engines in the front and the radiators in the back. That, uh, I've never seen anything like that yeah. before, ever. Um, and that guy was still using it to go back and forth to his cottage. Yeah, yeah. yeah Pulling yeah. a trailer, too. Pulling a trailer on top of it. Yeah. And it's just uh, absolutely amazing. So from there, we leave there and we go to our next hotel, which is north of Oslo. It's called the Lily Country Club. And the reason why we selected it, first of all, we couldn't get a hotel room in Oslo. Yeah. They were all sold out and yeah. they were kind of expensive. We then looked at the airport, also sold out. So this country club was right in the middle. It was in some rolling country hills. So Mike, what, describe the scenery of the area we were in. That's what I was mentioning to Mika on the drive up, that if if you told me we were in Pennsylvania, 
or Virginia, I might have believed you. It was you're just driving up this beautiful, lush valley, um, well maintained <coughs> farmhouses, and you know you see animals and farm fields. It was very lush. It was, um, I, I really liked it a lot. I was impressed by it. Bright, yeah. clean air. Like we oh, get back to yeah. Michigan, it's humid. Yeah. And the, all the whole sky is like hazy. Yeah. You know, you're like looking around. That's it, right, our yeah. first day there, they hit some rain rolled through. We're seeing double rainbows. rainbows. And yeah. Actually, the end of the rainbow we saw it was outside the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in, it's in a sand <laughs> trap. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. We that got was pictures. Where they, yeah. Maybe that's the golf balls. It's it that. It's not a a bag of gold. And it's a golf balls. We already mentioned early on in the video, both breakfasts and dinners there were there were phenomenal. Stunning. It was so good. Yes. So the next two days, Sunday and Monday, we spent almost the entire day, both days at the EVS 35 show. Not the EV 35 show, not the ES 36 show. <laughs> Sandy and I were filming the whole time and you know, I get it, what, why is the S there? It's an EV show, No idea. EV, EVS 35, so. We don't know what the S is for. Yeah, I think it was S like as EVs. I could be wrong, yeah. but I, that's how I remembered it anyway. Um, so I'll describe the show. So it was, it took up three halls of this convention center that I think had maybe four or five. Yeah. Not as big as CES. And there was one section which is more dedicated to charging infrastructure and heavy duty yeah. trucks, you know, suppliers, people who mm -hmm. supply all yeah. sorts of gizmos and gadgets for the electrical industry. The other hall had a lot of the vehicles. So there was some of the companies there. You first of all had Neo. You had Aura, Polestar, Vinfast was there. Uh, Aura was from. What did you not see? Oh yeah, mm. no American car presence. None. So all of this no way Norway thing, two, almost two years ago, f at the, during the Super Bowl, um, from GM. Where's their products? Where's yeah. their Norwegian presence? But it was even worse than that. How many Mercedes did you see? Zero. How many BMWs did you see? None. The only thing I saw from VW was the, uh, was the uh, 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 what do you call it, the Porsche. So um, I was really kind of shocked. And when I was interviewed, um, Vincent said, Sandy, give me a summation of what, uh, what you, uh, your first impressions of the show. And I sat there for a second because that's not the first kind of question I thought I was going to get. And I said, uh, China, China, China. You know, like location, location, location. Those are the three most important things and that's kind of like what was the most important thing there. Everything was Chinese, everything. It was amazing and we drove a bunch of their cars around. I'm telling you, uh, there's gonna be a, I'm, I'm sticking with my, uh, my chart that says the valley of death. I'm sticking with that. I truly believe that the, uh, the market is gonna be swamped with uh, Chinese vehicles just like what happened when the Japanese invasion came. So, Sandy, you had the opportunity to test drive the Neo ES8, the yeah. Xiaopang P7 and <coughs> P5, the Volvo uh, XC, XC40. XC40. Recharge. XC40 yeah, the recharge. recharge. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And so we're going to actually, those are all going to be separate videos. We're not going to include any of that in yeah. this. Um, so don't even talk about them. So they should be uh, four separate videos. So probably be anywhere from nine to 15 minutes long. I will tell you a little spoiler alert. Um, every one of them is a competitive product. Yeah. Every one of them. And the, some of these things come in at, at prices that you're gonna, what, where do I buy one? I, I think, uh, and I think. When we talk to the people who represent them, they all uh, plan to start in <coughs> Europe. Yeah. They're going to start in Europe selling these vehicles. Mm. Yeah, it, I thought it was interesting. We're starting in Europe because they have a free economy. Oh, <laughs> whatever happened to the free economy here in the yeah. U.S.? Oh man, yeah, yeah. So there was all those car rides, and um, after that, we we ended up talking to a, a bunch of other random. Uh, different suppliers yeah. you had roughly 50 people come up to you and recognize you and talk to you so but that didn't count the ones who saw us and pointed but yeah. didn't want to yeah, wanna yeah. <coughs> any any parting words on our nordic tour mike or sandy oh you know 
first. You go first, Mike. Uh, other than the, a first trip to both Sweden and Norway and being very impressed with the uh, the amount of uh, construction and, and just modernization, uh, being impressed with that, I was impressed with uh, just the whole between the Geely, Uni 3, Volvo, all that interaction is that um, it's going to be serious competitors coming. Yeah, coming from there, it's it's impressive. Yeah, oh. um, I, I thought that uh, the show was really well put together and it was well, really well attended. But I have a, a couple little teasers. We have two electric vehicles coming in the near future. I'm not going to say which ones, and I'm not going to give dates. But we have a lot more to come at, on Monroe Live that's going to pique everyone's interest. So stay tuned, particularly in the next month or two. Sandy? Yeah, so I, I um, all the technology and whatnot, that was amazing, but I, I was very um, happy, thankful, whatever, for the, for the kind of reception we got. I, you know, occasionally, uh, if you go to Europe as, a, as an American, uh, sometimes you're not received as well as what you'd hope for. Um, but I thought that the Swiss uh, sorry, not the Swiss. The Swedes and the uh, and the Norwegians treated us extremely well. Yeah. I mean, they uh, they were very helpful. They, uh, I mean, every every step of the way, they were very very kind to us. And yes, the technology is great. Yes, I agree with Corey. I I think there's going to be a, a terrible time for some of these folks. Um, and uh, I don't know how they're going to recover or recuperate, but. Uh, but but I can tell you for sure it's going to be uh, they're going to have a, their hands full trying to compete <coughs> in the uh, in this new world. So uh, stay tuned, uh, like Carrie said, stay tuned for um, uh, for some more of these little vignettes. Thank you again for watching when we're live. Um, we are looking for uh, more subscribers. So if you happen to like what you saw. Uh, we'd love to see you uh, attach, and then, of course, if you happen to want to go crazy and become a Patreon, that'd be great, too, because you're going to get the chance to see some of these longer version um, strategy videos yeah. that we've got coming down the pipes. So. And if you want to get a hold of us, <coughs> email us at sales at leandesign.com. Um, Mike yes, is the please one. do. I see. Yeah. I read every one of them. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, and um, keep watching Mineral Live. Thank you.